So these are my dry flies for early season river fishing and I'm going to talk about um, some of these dry flies and their evolution. Most of these are modern dry flies. You'll notice that I don't carry large boxes of massive selections. What I'll do is I'll have a master fly box and I'll select flies for the right time of season in the box and it's the first day of the trout season today so we're going to be using patterns which represent large dark olives and hopefully later we'll witness a large dark olive hatch and we'll see exactly how some of these patterns fish specifically I'm going to be talking about parachute flies um, traditional hackled flies and CDC no hackle duns so I'm going to show you these flies in the water and the advantages and disadvantages of all of these modern dry flies. Oh. So this is the first fly I'm going to talk about. This is a what we call a traditional hackled fly. Very pretty little fly this one. A nice pale dun imitation. And this is tied pretty much in a conventional fashion in that the hackle is wound um, around the hook shank at a 90 degree angle and this gives a nice impression of a dun and we'll just have a look at how that sits on the water so this is the traditional hackled fly as we see it sits very proud on the water those fibers which are tied at a 90 degree angle to the hook shank are very water repellent so the whole fly sits very high and proud on the water and looks very much like a, a dun which it of course imitates. It's a very very effective way of, of fishing dry flies because it's so water repellent the, as long as you treat the uh, hackle with a small amount of gink, just a micro drop of gink, um, the fly will sit high and dry. There are some disadvantages and not uh, very few people these days on the river use these traditional style flies however they're still very effective the fish don't seem to care and beautifully tied patterns like this will always be effective but many prefer other more modern variations of dry flies like parachutes so I'm just going to have a look at a couple of other uh, more modern dry flies so this is a traditional dry fly what we call a traditional hackle dry fly beautiful dry fly and of course it will catch fish but let's have a look at some of the uh, more modern flies that we use in stream fishing. Just on it. So this is a parachute fly. This particular pattern is a, an olive parachute Adams. A great pattern. Uh, generic patterns like uh, Adams. Uh, represent a whole range of insects. Uh, today I'm fishing an olive one because hopefully later we'll see a hatch of large dark olives and some fish rising to them. Now this, these flies are very very popular and for good reason. Unlike the traditional hackle, hackle front, fl uh, front fly, uh, the traditional hackled fly, this has no hackles at the front and therefore it's very clean. The, there's a very good uh, hookability in the fly. Not only that, it sits very nicely, as I'll just show you, in the surface film. And anything that hangs just below the surface, uh, in the surface film, or just below the surface film, is very attractive to trout because they see it as something that might be stuck. So it can be a free meal. So let's just have a look at how this one fishes in the surface current compared with the traditional dry. Okay, so this is the parachute fly. As we see, the body of the fly actually hangs below the surface film. This is very enticing for the trout. Uh, a variation, of course, of a parachute fly is a very popular fly by Hans van Klinken, known as the Klink Hammer. This is uh, perhaps one of the most famous parachute flies in the world. Very, very good fly, and it's caught many good trout and grayling all over the world. So. Parachute flies are a good modern variation. We 
they don't necessarily represent the dun stage as good as a traditional hackwood fly. However, they represent perhaps crippled emergers, flies stuck in the surface film, and emerging flies uh, far better than the traditional hackled flies. And these flies, in, from the fish's perspective, are amongst the easiest uh, flies to actually eat without them flying off. And I can just see a few duns starting to emerge from the river, so we'll put some of these flies into action very shortly. So the next fly I'm going to talk about is this no hackle done with a high CDC wing. Um, Swisher and Richards were the first anglers, the progressive anglers who actually looked at the life cycles of mayfly, or lots of insects but mayfly as well, and understood the importance of flies that sat in the surface film to imitate crippled emergers and things like this. The book Selective Trout is probably uh, still one of the most popular books ever written on fly fishing and presentation with flies. Superb book. And this is my variation of uh, some of Swisher and Richard's original ideas. I've used a CDC wing. Um, uh, many uh, European anglers, Mark P Petitjan and the like, over the past few years have been developed in CDC. It has many, many advantages as a winged uh, material for dry flies. Uh, importantly, it, it's very flexible, so when we cast the fly, the wing collapses and this prevents leader twist, which is a common problem with, for example, traditional dry flies. Not only that, the profile of the fly, as you can see, is much more like the natural insects that we're trying to imitate. And Vincent Marinaro, for one, was the first to realize the importance of a high wing on a dry fly as a trigger. Uh, this is because of, ref because of refraction. The first thing that the trout sees when the fly comes into, to, into its window of view is the top of the wing, not the, not the uh, body of the fly itself, but the, surf the top of the wing. So high body dry flies like this, uh, high wing dry flies like this are actually very good trigger flies. And as you can see, this is much more um, uh, realistic, a much more realistic pattern than the uh, traditional dry fly or the parachute dry fly and it fishes very well so let's just see how that sits in the film right now so this is the no hackle done as you can see it's far more susceptible um, to being pulled by the surface currents than the parachute fly this isn't a problem uh, but we have to improve our presentation with it one of the advantages of a parachute fly and one of the reasons they're so popular is the hackles actually sit in the surface film and prevent drag. Uh, with these no hackle duns, presentation has to be that much better because as we can see with the high wing, uh, they're uh, very susceptible to be pulled by uh, surface currents and wind, so presentation has to be better with these flies, but they are generally a better representation of the flies that we're actually trying to imitate. So this is the large, large dark olive dun, which the flies I was illustrating are imitating. And as you can see, in terms of realism, the no hackle dun is the one that's closest to the mark with the fly. This is about a size 16. Some anglers consider it a size 14. It depends on on uh, the particular stream. On this stream these insects are about a size 14. Uh, this, or this, of course, this, this type of mayfly, the Ephemeroptera, are iconic of fly fishing. The mayfly species are perhaps the most imitated species of all in terms of fly and with good reason. This is an ancient group of insects, one of the oldest groups of insects on the planet and the word ephemeral the Latin word ephemeral actually has the same root in Latin meaning short-lived and the reason is of course the species mate 
for a few days. They only live their winged life cycle in a few days and spend most of their life in the rivers as a larval form. This isn't the final sexually mature adult. This insect will molt again and when it molts again the colour will become reddish brown and the, the very distinct uh, drab, grey coloured, grey coloured wings will become transparent and see-through. So this is a large dark olive and this is the species that we're imitating in the first couple of weeks on these streams in the north of England. Wet the net first. Had the uh, first fish of the session. He has a cormorant scar on. Of course, cormorants are. See the cormorant scar on his tail there? Nice fish, though. We'll let him go straight back. There you go, my friend. So, early season, uh, the fish are on olives, and as long as you get nice upstream, good presentation with the fly, they're fairly keen and on the fly quite quickly. 